In week one of Code Breaking Club, we looked at one of the oldest methods of encoding a message. That's called the Caesar cipher, named after Julius Caesar. And that means that it's over 2,000 years old. The problem with it being 2,000 years old is it's going to be pretty easy to crack once we know how. What I've got at the bottom are three copies of the alphabet. If I move one up here and then move another one just so I can talk about what we've got here. Now, so far they're lined up. So currently I've got A lined up with A. Uh, K lined up with K, and V lined up with V, and so on. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that they don't line up, and this will help us to change one letter for a different one. So here I've moved it along so that A li now lines up with F. Uh, that, nothing special about F, I just chose F. So now, if I want to replace, if, if I want to write the letter A, I will code it as an F. And if I want to use the letter F, I'll code it as a K, and the N will become an S, and U will become Z. We see at the end of the alphabet, these have nothing to line up to. So what I need to do is I need to sort of wrap the alphabet round, uh, bringing in this second copy, uh, just lining that up there. So now V becomes A, Z becomes E, and so on. Now if I want to send the message help me using my new code, I start off with H. Now H in real text, in plain text we're going to call that, gets transferred into M in cipher text. So I'm going to, under H I'm going to write M. E becomes J. So I'll write J there. L, as you see, becomes Q. And P becomes U. M becomes R. And E becomes J. So there's my message encrypted, and now you can't read that, M-J-Q-U-R-J. And if you know how to work backwards, if you knew the code, if you knew the encryption method, to change the M, we'd look for M at the bottom, change it to H, then J would become the E, Q would become L, and U would become P, uh, R would become M, and J would become E. So help me would be how I'd read that. Now... The problem with this, then, is it's quite open to attack. It's open to attack because you can sort of see how many letters are in each word. So it might be best if I sort of didn't leave gaps or split them into threes all the time. That sort of confuses people if you put it in threes. Um, and what, one other easy way to attack this would be to look at the number of letters that there are. In my encoded version, there's two J's, which looks a little bit suspicious. Uh, J looks like it might be one of the more common letters. So I could then guess that J might be, might be E or A or R or some of the letters that appear quite a lot in normal text. So it's open to attack by frequency analysis. But the worst thing is it's open to attack by Bruce, brute force methods. That is, I can try all the different ways of lining up the alphabet and see if there's one that makes the message readable. And that won't take too long, so it's not really a very secure method.